Thank you so much for joining us on The Dwelling Show. I'm your host, Ola Dantes. I've got the amazing, incredible Ruben Great with us today. Hey, Ruben, how are you doing? Dude, I'm fantastic, man. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing fantastic. So I've been on your podcast. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Um, you're doing a ton, you know, pumping our content about real estate. I uh, kind of wanted to bring you on on, on our show as well. Uh, can you kind of tell our, Louis, our listeners a little bit more about who you are, how you got started in the real estate investing game. Yeah, man. Ola, thank you so much for having me on your show. And for the record, I got to mention, this is my very first podcast on somebody else's show. So I, I'm super excited that whoop, I get whoop. to do that here on your show, man. I'm a big fan. I know that you're buying units. You're in the middle of some crazy things right now, trying to close transactions while we're in the middle of our show. Yep. But um, yeah, man, thank you for having me on. Um, so my story, I suppose, starts with the seed. Um, son, I made all of my money in real estate. I didn't make it as a doctor. I always found that very interesting. So after I graduated college, I figured I would get into mortgages and use that as a stepping stone uh, to get into real estate. And I was looking at my goals, man. I used to do this program by Anthony Robbins. And it was, you know, he'd say like, write down your goals reading. And, and, and I read it the other day and it said, I want to be a realty investor. Like I didn't even have the terminology down. Man. Like, I was <laughs> a realty is like something that, that people sell, I think to, to this point. But so I started a meetup about real estate back in 07 under the Phoenix real estate market. It's going to be one of the greatest uh, shifts of wealth that we're ever going to see in our life. And I was like, what do you mean? Did you just say you have a bankruptcy? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, so how are you buying these properties? He, he had like, I think he had purchased like five or six or seven fourplexes. And um, so we started becoming friends and I'm like, can I go to you, uh, to your, to your properties and like film you explaining how you found the property, what you were going to do to tenant occupy the property. Um, you know, where did you get the capital from what you were going to do to it and how you were doing it so efficiently and so quickly with the bankruptcy. And as a result, you know, like I posted these videos on YouTube and people started reaching out saying, Hey, we like what you're doing. Can we invest with you? And all of a sudden I raised like within a period of nine months, $650,000 to purchase an additional, just from like some, some YouTube videos with rap music in the background. Honestly, like we were just messing around, like not trying to, to uh, accomplish anything other than just add value. What I now know to be a, the, uh, a thought leadership platform, right? So that's what we created uh, in our own way back during the crash. And so I bought a threeplex, a fourplex, uh, another threeplex, and then a 12 unit. And then uh, my partner was like, hey, you're so good at, at this marketing thing because he was horrible at marketing. He knew how to do investing, but he didn't know how to do marketing. And he's like, we, we sh you should focus on just marketing. And so I did. Like I uh, implemented, I was, I was going to hire somebody to do like um, a drip system campaign. We were going to write a book. We hired a producer to come out to Phoenix and like shoot this little video that we were going to try and sell to people, um, sell to uh, like an A&E network, you know, we we're going to do a reality television show on multifamily investing. But um, then he started getting over leveraged with all of his properties. I think at the top, uh, we had units of which I shared in 22 units. And um, he started flaking off because he didn't understand outsourcing and using other people to help him, right? So I was started getting frustrated because I was spending all this money on marketing and he wasn't even showing up for people when they would come in from out of town and we got in a fight and then split up. And then I left real estate altogether, um, ended up back in corporate America and I can't be behind a desk. Ola. I can't, I can't be in corporate America. So one day I just quit, took off to Mexico with my dogs and camped on the beach all the way down. Uh, to Cancun. Along the way, I met my to-be future wife. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but so I came back to Mex uh, came back to the United States about a year later. Tried to get into real estate. Tried to do it by myself. I created this this plan to buy 34 fourplexes. 
So I'd have 128 units, and I figured after I paid down the, the debt on it, I would have enough cash flow to survive for my life with everything that I needed. But I just couldn't, couldn't do it because I didn't have the money. I didn't qualify for a loan. And I shared this plan with somebody and they said, why don't you just go buy them right now? And I was like, what? What do you mean? Like, this is a slow process. They're like, no, you, you can't do this by yourself, Ruben. You need to focus um, on a concept called multifamily syndication, which is a team sport. So I started interviewing everybody, you know, like uh, multiple um, gurus, you know, I, the Jake and Gino's of the world, families, and the list goes on and on of the people, Vinny Chopra, uh, Dan Hanford. I interviewed all the multifamily syndicators that could hold down. Get into multifamily, and he said, Well, you need this team, this team, this this team member, you know, acquisitions guy, somebody with a vision, a construction manager. Um, you need to have a lawyer, a CPA, and he listed off all the team members. And then he's he looked at me and he's like, well, What do you mean? Like, so why do you want to do multifamily? Why do you like multifamily? Tell me your background. And I told him I raised money on social media for a few fourplexes. And he's like, well, we need to do that for us. Why don't you just come work with us instead of spending a bunch of money on a, on a guru program, which would have been a great option. I think it would have been a great option. But if they wanted me and I had something of value for them um, and they had a track record that I could, uh, you know, ride on their coattails for, it, it, it turned out to be a beautiful uh, marriage. So now we're... We're implementing some new capital raising systems, and uh, they're fantastic at closing multifamily. We just sold 170 and then we're building. We're we're uh, we're going to be creating a podcast room for me to broadcast my show. So that's kind of my background. I did spend like what maybe six or seven years completely away from from real estate investing i tried to sell real estate to investors but i'm a horrible salesman when it comes to I'm showing people houses um but what i'm good at is you know brand awareness and getting our name out so now i go to conferences and i share who bakerson is and we're starting to get some national attention and bakerson loves me and i love them and it's phenomenal core values you know, I think what we try to do is is purchase properties that we can make clean, function, functional, durable, safe, and uh, treat each resident with the dignity they deserve. And, you know, so I'm in the right place, you know, and I can't wait to scale and help these guys get to 10,000 units, you know, over the next however many years. So that's, that's my background. I, tr I try to knock it out real fast for you. Yeah, I mean, I think we can just, we can just hand the podcast. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, <laughs> no, but no, definitely. There's a lot of stuff I would like to, I'd like to touch on. So you, you mentioned that, you know, you started small. So you were buying duplexes, um, sorry, triplexes, and you bought a quad, and then you bought a 12 unit. If there's somebody listening to us and they're thinking of starting out in multifamily, would you say from your experience to kind of start small? with like some of the duplex, the triplexes, you know, quads maybe? Or would you say they should go look for, you know, a mentor to help them kind of scale straight into multifamily? There's a, you know, there's a lot of um, school of thoughts on this. Some people would say, well, you know what? Just go big or go home. Like that's kind of like a grand cadon kind of thing. Like, yeah. hey, just go big. Or some people will say, you know, just kind of start small, get your feet wet, see if it's something you like before you go big. So what are your, your, your thoughts on that? Uh, me personally, I would say go big. Go big right off the bat. But the, the problem is it's not as easy as it sounds. First of all, you have to associate yourself with the right people. And number two, and more importantly, I know that you love to talk about mindset, you know, because just like my personal situation, I had the mindset of, hey, let's do this small until somebody opened my mind to the possibility that you can do bigger than, than four units. And that's, a very hard thing to get over like a fourplex is within within the realm of possibilities for most people you know uh, a 200 unit property is not so i would say the first thing is work on your mindset by going to tony robbins or whoever you know um you resonate with in terms of personal development uh, i think that 
getting into a bigger property faster is the way to go, but that comes with its own set of challenges because you have to create a team. You can't do that by yourself. Like I was trying to, and, um, you know, I, I, once you have a mindset shift, if that's even possible for you, because most people can't fathom it, you know, uh, getting into a big deal, but I would say go big if you can. And if that means getting a mentor or joining a team, then that's the way you need to do it. Um, right now it's so challenging to find a big property, but tell you what, it's just as challenging to find a small property, like four unit complexes in Phoenix are impossible to find that cash flow, especially if you're coming in with the 3% house hacking, you know, type of mindset, Hey, I'll just do an FHA loan, purchase a, you know, a 203k rehab loan or a regular uh, loan. It's, it's going to be very challenging to cash flow and find a deal because they're just if, if there is a deal in the fourplex world, it's gone in about an hour here in Phoenix. I don't know about other places, but they disappear quick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Phoenix is a, a very fascinating market. I really like that market um, a lot. I, I haven't been yet, but I've heard really great things about Phoenix. So, so if I'm, if I'm a little guy and I'm like listening to this and I'm like, Hey, I'm not even thinking about multifamily. I'm just thinking about how to get started in real estate. Maybe I'm thinking about flipping, wholesaling, you know, buy and hold single family. What'd you say to that person? Man, I, I talk to that person on a regular basis at my meetup. Um, so I run a meetup with Dan Hanford, the multifamily investor nation meetup, and it teaches, you know, so they, Dan teaches us what to talk about in the multifamily syndication space. And I put together this meetup and you would think that you can teach this to people that are interested or, or scaling their multifamily syndication, but every person that shows up is like, you know, interested in a fourplex for the most part. And they're, they're very small or they're wholesaling or they have no money. They ask that a lot, like, how do I get involved? And, you know, there's a lot of free resources that I would recommend. Number one, listen to podcasts like Ola Dodd's podcast, The Woo! Dwelling Show. Thanks now, for the plug. The five, Leave them a five-star rating, people. Like, we don't get enough ratings on our show. So anytime you, you understand, it helps us with the algorithm to get our information out to, to more people. But back to the question, um, the, the first thing that you need to do, I believe, is to super, super start absorbing a lot of educational information, uh, whether it's free or through a mentor or through a program. But if if you're looking to get started and you don't have money to drop on a program, uh, I would say like read books. I have a bunch back there. Just spend the money, either buy the books or the audio program or however you like to absorb information. There's a bazillion podcasts. Uh, definitely go on there and just start educating yourself and do massive, massive amounts of networking. Go to all of the free meetups in your local area. I think that's going to help a lot. And then just start to associate because, you know, a lot of us, we have people in our lives that either hold us down or just don't have the same vision or goals as, as we do when it comes to investing in real estate. So start surrounding yourself with people that have that mindset. It, it'll open a huge number of doors for you. I think that would be the best thing. So a lot of people reach out to me and say, Hey, Ola, can you mentor me? Or, you know, can you show me the ropes or, you know, whatever. And, you know, usually I, you know, I would say like, Hey, um, you know, I really believe in paid mentorship, right. Um, or add value to that syndicator in some, in a really tangible, substantive way, um, to that syndicator, like help them with social media or something like that, or whatever you're good at. Right. So I just kind of wanted to ask you about, you know, you mentioned it briefly, but what are your thoughts on mentorship for somebody trying to, you know, maybe get into the business of syndication? Well, here's the first mindset, um, paradigm shift that somebody's got to have because a lot of people will spend a hundred thousand dollars on a college education right and that's something that a lot of times people don't even use so when you contemplate what you get from a college career and all your family will support you on getting a college career for the most part but maybe not so much to spend money on a on a mentor or a program but when you compare apples to apples and what's going to get you farther in life faster, these programs, assuming that you find the right one, you know, and I recommend if you're going to go down that path, interview at least 10 different uh, 
gurus or syndication companies or whatever real estate strategy you want to, don't go with the first one. Don't let yourself get sold. Um, but, but I would say, you know, spending 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000, half as much, a quarter as much as the regular college education so that you can learn this business is a wise investment of your money. Because if it takes you to do something that you're passionate about and helps you get into a business that, that can have an amazing, uh, profound impact on communities in the multifamily space, because you're not just helping yourself or your investors, you're helping these residents get a nicer place to live. You're specifically taking charge. You're 10Xing you know, what a single family investor would do. You're doing 10Xing, maybe even 100Xing because you have an impact on the communities, the residents, um, all these jobs, ancillary real estate service providers that are entitled, lawyers, syndication people, um, construction crews, you have a massive impact on the economic growth for the United States and spiritually that allows you to grow um, as a soul, you know, if you, if you believe into that because you're having a greater impact, you're self-realizing. And I think that's what the name of the game is, is how do you withdraw the best version of yourself or how can you create the biggest impact in the world? And when you start going into bigger and bigger deals, and you know, we're, we're probably, I hear Tim Brotz talk about it all the time. You know, he rents a, a like um, a yacht and then, you know, he spends like 100, 200, $300,000 on it and he feels like he's balling, right? But then he pulls up into the harbor and there's like yachts that are five, six, seven, eight times bigger than the one he is, you know? So it's like, you have to create the mindset of how do I get to the next level? How do I get bigger? And um, if you're looking at fourplexes, there's nothing wrong with that, man. That's what my mindset used to be. And it, and then from there, you can start scaling into 100-unit apartment complexes. And then from Tim Bratz's perspective, how do you get to the next level? You know, there's always an ability to scale and to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's something that we all have to deal with on an intrinsic basis individually. It's uh, different for all of us. Um, but definitely have the mindset of grow, grow, grow. And go as big as you can, as fast as you can. Yeah. So another main thing, almost a curse word is raising funds, right? Raising money for, you know, your deals or other people's deals. Um, that's also, you know, I, I guess like a kind of a, a mind block for a lot of people like, Hey, I don't know anybody with money kind of thing. That's what most people say, like, Oh, I don't know how to raise money. Um, you've done some of that with your, you know, thought leadership platform, you, the YouTube videos you were doing, but now you've, you're a little bit more sophisticated in terms of, you know, understanding the dynamics of raising capital. Um, so can you kind of tell, you know, somebody listening to this thinking, well, Ruben, help me. I, I, you know, what can I, what are the things I need to do to raise money um, either towards a syndication or maybe to buy a smaller size deal? Woo, I mean, I'm getting like goosebumps, man. <laughs> I love, I love the concept, everything about raising capital. I think it's one of the most powerful things that you can learn and master of all the things in um, real estate so I get I get chills and yeah I've had I've interviewed around 30 to 35 people some of them not um, capital raisers they're syndication lawyers who talk about legalities or some people that are transitioning into multifamily but here, here's the one thing I ask people how do you raise capital for real estate and they would be like Ruben you're that's not the right question to ask is uh, that's the wrong mindset altogether. The right mindset is how can you find, um, how can you present an opportunity and help somebody? Because like John Kasman says, don't care about you or business. And he repeated it on my show. He's like, nobody cares about you or your business. What they care about is how you or your business can help them general generational wealth, you know? So that's the focus the mindset shift change needs to be really on um, focusing on the person that you're trying to help and making sure that your deal and, and what you do is uh, the other thing is he said that you know if you're raising capital after you have the deal, then the person has to know, like, and trust you really fast. They have to understand the deal. They have to understand why multifamily. And then they have to understand the way the return structure in, 
is, and then if you're trying to do that after the deal, it's just overwhelming, super stressful, major challenge. So the main thing that I'm gathering for Bakerston and, and for our business model is to really have systems in place and to start sharing information about not specifically one type of property, about your track record, about what you've done in the past, um, everything that people will need to know, like, and trust you and share it on a consistent basis and get that information out and have these investor communications way before you ever have a deal. Because when you try to do it after you have the deal, then it's just, um, it's, it's too stressful and too hard. I mean, people do it, but Bakerson has a track record of doing it, but it's, it's hard. You know, we always do it the hard way. And now we're starting to realize, well, maybe we don't have to do it the hard way anymore, Matt, you know? Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're, over the next year, we're going to create these systems where we can get in front of people. And that's, that's what I would say is like, even if you're brand new and you've never invested in, you're like, well, I don't have a track record. How can I do that? Well, the first thing is to develop a model. And if somebody else, this is an example, this is what you do. Um, you know, and if people say, yeah, that kind of resonates with me, then you already have your foot in the door. And then these people, the bigger that this network grows for you, as you get in front of more people, then when you do have the deal, you go back to them and say, hey, remember we had a conversation about this? You know, it meets the criteria that I was talking about that makes sense. Uh, I've already told you about multifamily. I told you why I like it. It's a great asset class. It's got a lot of tax benefits, uh, depreciation. It cash flows, it's resi recession resistant, et cetera, et cetera. And so now they know um, the asset class, why you like it, you know, and then they begin to know, like, and trust you. And that's how you, you start from scratch. But you do need to do it with other people, not just by yourself, because that's, that's not the way to do it. All right. All right. I mean, I wish we could keep going, but we're definitely, definitely dwelling into the quick rounds. These are going Ooh. to be quick questions. Quick answers. You ready, sir? Let's go, bro. Let's do it. All right. First question. What makes you, Ruben, unique? What is that differentiating factor that separates you from the next guy or from the next girl? Uh, whew. Man, that's hard to answer quickly. But I, I would say that I've done some personal development, leadership training, and I'm vulnerable and transparent on things that I think some people would say is a sign of weakness, but I'm Showing my true self, I think, is, is something that differentiates me from other people. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, second question, you've got a bunch of books behind you there. What was the last book that you read? And what was the one thing you picked up from that book? Um, let's see. The one that I last completed, because I have it, at any time like five or six books going, and I don't finish any of them, right? But sometimes I do complete the books. And I read... Vinny Chopra's book, Apartment Syndication Made Easy. And let's see, the, the number one takeaway I got from it, um, probably, man, he had these, this example of like all these plates spinning, and then you have to figure out which ones you're supposed to balance, right? Because if you, have, if you add another plate, then they all crash and, and fall. So to, to manage what you can manage spinning in terms of this, this example, the plates, and then don't put more onto your, you know, into your system or, or stuff that you can't manage. Wow. That's a good one. Last question. You've got your wife, obviously you've got family. I'm sure you, you know, you're doing a ton of stuff for the podcast for Baker saying, what do you do for fun? How do you, you know, chill? All right. Two things, man. Uh, I'm a very spiritual dude. So I love putting into practice the concept of manifesting. Like, so I've done things, uh, manifested thing. I think the number one thing um, is I manifested through Mexico amongst a uh, lot of corruption and federales that just want to take your money. So um, once you realize that you have the power to manifest, then you can't get enough of it, right? Hmm. You want to keep on practicing and break – pull more things into existence. So I think that's like my number most fascinating hobby other than maybe snowboarding. I love to snowboard, but that's one thing uh, that I really love to practice. And, and the more that you do it, the more powerful you get it. As long wow. as you're in alignment with your source. 
Awesome. 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 Well, if there's somebody listening and thinking, wow, I like this Ruben guy. I want to get to know him more. Where's the best place people can reach out, connect with you, get to know you more. And you can mention and just had your podcast details as well. Um, I like to be found on social media, uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and particularly right now, I'm really loving LinkedIn. Uh, I like to spend some time on there. You can go to our website, bakerson.com, or you can reach out to me, uh, let's see, ruben at bakerson.com, or give me a call. My phone number is right on top of my LinkedIn, 602-300-3889. I'd love to talk to anybody about anything real estate, especially when it comes to raising capital and just talk. I don't necessarily a lot of times have things to sell. I just love talking about real estate. So that would be the number one thing. Yeah, you're brave to give out your number. Thank you for doing that. Um, I really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's been awesome, man. Thank you for having me on. I can't wait to come back maybe in a year or two or whenever you invite me back, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it.